been joined by the Member of Parliament for Pru East. I beg your pardon, Mr. Akeda. Member of Parliament for Pru East is also a former Minister for Power and the Select Committee, uh, Chairman of the Select Committee of Parliament of Mines and Energy Chief. Good morning, Doc. Good morning. Thank you very much for coming. Dr. Kwabna Donko is my guest. Let's start off the conversation this way. Um, you, I see you well, have a copy of the budget yes. and the financial statement. Well, I'm no, I'm no longer the chairman. Oh, okay. I was a chairman. Oh, you were. Yes. Apologies for me. One of my past, the various pastors I have done. Absolutely. I was the first chief executive of BOST. Mm. I set up BOST. Mm. I was the first chief executive of the Petroleum Commission. Okay. And I was a chairman. I'm now only a member of the committee. I see. Interesting. Congratulations to you Thank for you. all the hard work. I see you have a copy of the budget statement. Did it meet your expectations, the Impunto budget? Uh, well, Impunto, um, surprise at Impunto, mm. because we had um, seeds for growth. The seeds didn't germinate. Okay. And so. Mm. They probably had to change the title. No, it didn't meet my expectation. It didn't meet my expectation because we cannot be doing the same thing over and over again and expect different outcomes. Mm. We must change the narrative as a people. Okay. Our narrative for developing this country must be based on nationalism mm -hmm. and discipline. Mm. And if we don't address these major themes, mm will be going around in cycles. Half of the things going wrong with this country mm. arise out of lack of discipline. Mm. Okay. Both at the macro and at the micro level. Mm. Both at the individual and at the collective level. Okay. The carnage on our roads. Mm. The uh, banking crisis. Mm. Just <coughs> all borders on lack of discipline. But and supervision? It's discipline. Okay. Discipline from Bank of Ghana. Okay. Bank of Ghana, if you take the banking crisis, mm. Bank of Ghana superintended over this for a number of years. Mm. You see, in regulatory and enforcement regimes, mm. compliance is cardinal. Mm. And that is why regulatory bodies have a responsibility to ensure compliance. That is why they are clothed with sufficient powers to ensure compliance. If you sleep on the job, mm. you don't then suddenly wake up and cause the havoc that is being caused. The, the Akufado led administration says the Asempa budget, the Juma budget, the Impunto budget is a, a process, a combination of activities that will see Ghanaians smile at the end of the day. 2019 has been labeled as the action year. Do you, do you follow this trend? Unfortunately, no. Why not? Why not? Because it just plays to the Ghanaian psyche. We are very good, and not just the Akufuado regime, mm -hmm. but as a people, we are extremely good at rhetoric. We are extremely good at putting words together to excite, but with no substance under. Um, we have not made the progress that we need to make as a people, mm -hmm. simply because we are um, I hate to say we are intellectually lazy. I've said that and I've run into problems. Okay. Um, but if that's the truth, that why, the truth. Why, why are you running into problems? Who's putting people, th people think it's insulting, but that is the fact. We, we are, you see, look at the history of development in the last 50 years. Okay. The countries that have made the most progress, mm -hmm. developing countries that have made the, there are, Certain traits about them. What are, the, what are the gaps in our situation? For example, you've seen the budget. The debate has started. What are the gaps let, let me give you in, a, in our situation? Let me give you a few, just a few examples. Mm. Look, if you look at paragraph 187 of the budget, mm -hmm. and with your permission, right. I will read. Please do. Para he says, Mr. Speaker, as of September 2018, Ghana National Petroleum Company Limited, GMPC, mm -hmm. had lifted seven passes. Since when did GMPC become a company? I mean, it's symptomatic of our uh, lack of attention to details. Mm -hmm. GMPC by PNDC Law 64 mm -hmm. was established as a corporation. It's still right. a corporation. Right. The, they are very simple. You want to forgive it as a typo? 
it can be a typo. Did okay. nobody go through this? And especially when you move on to then say um, we have the number of liftings, etc. Mm -hmm. GMPC is the cash cow of the oil and gas sector. If we can even get the nomenclature, the nomenclature wrong. Mm. What else can't we get wrong? The, the government says 70, of course, the law says 70% of oil proceeds must go into infrastructure. Now, government says it hopes to raise some 5 million in excess of that uh, in the coming year. No. In 2019, we expect to hit over a billion plus dollars as mm. government revenue. He says five point five or something. No, that their calculation no. is not correct. No, 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 no. It's stated in it's the stated budget. There. Yes, okay. yes. Mm. Uh, even la even last year, a mm. current year, we raised seven hundred and twenty-three million dollars. Do you see the seventy percent being used for infrastructure as is stated there, in black and white? Do you it see it depends on what you classify as infrastructure. Okay, really, mm. it depends on what you classify as infrastructure. Okay, for me, the challenge with our petroleum sector okay. is that the Ghanaian state has not defined exactly what it wants out of oil and gas. Mm. The Heritage Fund, the Stabilization Fund and the rest, okay. put them aside. Mm. What exactly do we want out of it with it on this increased revenue? Mm. I am worried. And I'm worried because we have not defined our act as a Ghanaian state. Okay. Forget about NDC, forget about MPP. Mm. As a people, what is it we want out of it? Because you cannot eat your cake and have it. Okay. Do we want to invest it in agriculture? Mm. If we want to invest it in agriculture, what form of agriculture? Okay. What are the structures? Mm. Or we want a bit everywhere with no concentration. What do you make of the current situation? Uh, John Amo says Dumso is not back. It's erratic power supply and everything is under control. What do you see as former power minister? Well, everything cannot be under control and then still be erratic. The, that's a contradiction in terms. Mm. If it's under control, then it cannot be erratic. There is a challenge. There's, and it's basically a full challenge premised on a financial challenge. Right. You see, um, it was not for nothing that the Ghanaian state, mm -hmm. in resolving issues of load shedding in the past, decided that we should also have a diversification of fuel sources. Okay. Currently, as we speak, we have hydro, mm -hmm. we have gas fired, mm. we have light crude oil fired and mm. we have heavy fuel oil fired plants okay so there is a diversity mm. exactly for a day such as this mm. remember in 2016 um fps and okay went out of production for a while for some remedial works mm. for about three weeks on about two three occasions mm. we didn't experience low sh shared and then okay. even though gas supply had been affected the government the ministry statement says there are bottlenecks in gas supply right um, arriving at the Boise corridor absolutely that is just uh, it's not true. Po political speak for the gas is not coming in sufficient quantities so, the, the, so what we should have been told is that the gas is not coming in sufficient quantities. in the Boise okay corridor and it is for that reason that we can ramp up hydro for a short period mm. it is for that reason that we can then fire the a number of the plants mm. tico can be fired on light crude oil tapco can be mm. fired on light crude oil tt1 mm. pp can be fired on mm. light crude oil etc so we ought to be firing those other plants did, did you leave a debt of 3.2.8 uh, billion dollars for for this government does your government leave that that's what mr Mewu says that they came they inherited some 2.8 billion dollars uh of debt and they have uh, in, you know wait. retired 500 million wait. uh well in the, in the issue of gas that's that we owe from the west african gas pipeline i mean um i didn't hear him say that okay. and so it's, I it's been and, reported widely. And, and so i should be measured okay gas bill alone could not have been three point something billion what is our gdp mm. dollars that we can owe gas alone mm. 
Three point something billion dollars. How much is the gas coming from Nigeria that we can owe that much? Over a period? You weak, please. I mean, I, I'm just asking. I, yeah, I'm I, just asking. I, I hate to say if what is being reported, as said by the minister, is true, okay. then the minister is misleading this nation. How so? I hope it, what has been reported is not true. Mm. We couldn't have left gas liability of over three point something billion. What, what did you leave? What do you know to be you don't the figures throw, of debt? You don't throw the question at me here without notice and ask me how much gas. The finance minister will answer that. Or if you give me time, we'll give you that. Right. You see, we inherited a system that at, at every one point we owe our suppliers. Mm -hmm. Because we are invoiced after a certain number of days. Okay. That's how the system works. Mm. It is not cash down, cash and carry. Mm. They supply you, they invoice, you pay. Mm. Sometimes payment is not as prompt as it ought to be. Okay. And so at every one time, there are some outstandings in the pipeline. Mm. And that is normal in the trade. That there are always outstandings. Mm. But absolutely, over $3 billion dollars. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yes, the minister couldn't have said that. Mm. And I, two point eight. That was the figure he quoted. Two point eight billion, and he says they have retired five hundred million. So if it's, left with, if you, it's left with If you are talking of total energy sector debt, that is a different thing. Okay. But if you're talking of gas, mm. it, it couldn't be possible. It, no, it's he not says possible. All the plants were mobilized apart from buoy, and so sometimes you would have. Uh, a deficit of uh, between 50 megawatts and 300 megawatts on specific days. And he says that that has also been stabilized. That was what you bequeathed to him as minister. That, 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 that is absolutely wrong. Okay. The, was there low shedding? Mm. From 16th December 2015 mm. to date, this is the first time we are having load shedding. We we'll always have localized outages. Okay. That distinction is so, is so important. Right. For example, the okay. transformer serving your area mm. can be overloaded and therefore it will blow out or it will cut off. Right. There could be a cable fault mm. in a particular locality. Mm. Those are to be expected. Is that not what's happening? Well, the, the, the minister didn't say that. If what I read... It's factual. The minister said there were gas supply right. shortages. So gas supply shortages couldn't be mm. a transformer. Uh, as of 22nd November, that's, what, that's, that's the date it said, that the low, low gas uh, supply from Nigeria, as of 22nd November. You see, the, there are two things. Okay. The same ministry says there are challenges or bottlenecks in the supply of gas hitting the Abuazi corridor. Right. The Abuazi corridor presently doesn't take gas from Nigeria. Mm. So it is not Nigerian gas in terms of the Abuazi corridor. Mm. The Tema corridor, yes, takes gas from Nigeria. Okay. The Tema corridor takes gas from Nigeria. And that is why Sonon Asogli and the generating assets in the Eastern corridor are not generating enough. Is Mr. Mehu doing... doing Doing uh, what you expect him to do as Minister for Energy, is he delivering? It is not for me to judge him. It is for the Ghanaian You've people. been in a seat before. Is he doing well? I do, I do, because I've been in the seat before, I don't make com ordinary make comments on the performance of somebody occupying the seat. Okay. For me, I think it's professionally unethical. I will let others do that. Did Mr. Boache Jaku deserve a sack as Energy Minister over the American controversy? American? American controversy, sorry about well, that. All appointees are hired at the pleasure of the president. Mm. You work at his pleasure. The president will always have information that you and I will not have. Mm. And so I don't challenge decisions of the president. Okay. Even if the decision is unfavorable, I don't challenge it. Okay. The president has the whole state apparatus, mm. especially the security service and others. Okay. So he makes a judgment. And the people of Ghana repose that trust and responsibility in him to make that judgment. So who am I? You, you were silent when the Ameri issues came up. Yes. Uh, why? Many thought that you would be speaking up. No, why should, why should I? I went to Parliament, stated the case, Parliament approved, 
if other people are raising issues, mm. I will let the facts speak for themselves. Fortunately, uh, events have vindicated my position. Okay. And so sometimes, it's, silence is golden. Okay. Yeah. All right. But if you will allow me, oh. there are some critical issues in the 2019 budget. For mm. example, the Minister of Finance says he will come to the House. Okay for approval to exclude $181.8 million okay. from the PRME. Mm. This is the most dangerous statement I've heard why in the it, whole why year. Why is it dangerous? It is dangerous because the people of Ghana, the mm. good people of Ghana, mm. haven't learned lessons from our immediate neighborhood and haven't learned best practice from elsewhere. Mm. And having realized that oil revenues are not only economically critical, but emotionally very sensitive, mm. set up a structure, the PRME, mm. that all oil revenue should be accounted using the petroleum revenue management uh, uh, modality. Mm. Right. And that all petroleum revenue, oil revenue should come in and then it also gives the government four areas where government should determine because it's elected right. wh wherever it wants to use the revenue. Mm. So government has that. But to say that you will not mm. account for $181 million, you will not pass it through the framework established, mm. is not dangerous but a slippery. In that today is 181. Mm. Tomorrow, another government, another finance minister mm. says, okay, uh, $500 million, let's set it aside. Okay. How do we ensure accountability? Mm. What will solve the power crisis? Finally, I beg you. What will solve the power crisis? The power crisis will be solved on a number of legs. For example, the reduction in the last tariff okay. was populist was not based on actuality mm. but was playing to the gallery 70 to 80 percent of all expenditure mm. in the power sector is dollar denominated all right. apart from salaries and wages mm. at the time when the cd and their receivables are in cds so at the time when your cd is depreciating against the dollar mm. to further reduce the tariff is a double whammy. Okay. Government could have decided that, okay, I'm taking off all my taxes mm. to give some relief to consumers. What that would do, it would be to let the tariff stay because of the deterioration in the what? city dollar relationship. Mm. The other alternative is since most of the entities are owned by government, and the government says, okay, then I will re-inject capital. Okay. For example, Greco had to cancel in this year 80% mm. of all their capital expenditure because of that tariff reduction. So you are postponing the inevitable. If you want efficiency, if especially technical efficiency, you need to invest okay. more. If, if you are postponing that, what do you do? ECG made profits in 2016. Okay. ECG made losses in 2017 and 2018. Mm. And yet, there has been no capital injection by the shareholder who is government, and this revenue has also been capped. It's a double whammy. Dr. Kwabla Dokwai, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. He's a former minister for power, and is the MP for Pru East. Uh, he's joined us here on the conversation.